A few minutes ago in Brussels, the United Kingdom's permanent representative to the EU handed a letter to the President of the European Council on my behalf, confirming the Government's decision to invoke Article 50 of the Treaty on European Union. Mr Speaker, I know that this is a day of celebration for some and disappointment for others. The referendum last June was divisive at times. Not everyone shared the same point of view or voted the same way. The arguments on both sides were passionate. But Mr Speaker, when I sit around the negotiating table in the months ahead, I will represent every person in the United Kingdom, young and old, rich and poor, city, town, country, and all the villages and hamlets in between. So, what do the public really think about Brexit? What do they want out of the future relationship between the UK and the EU? In early 2017, we visited towns and villages across the east of England. We asked people, young and old, in school halls, community centres, prisons and market squares about their personal responses to Brexit and their priorities moving forward. We chose areas where opinions on Brexit were strongly divided, including strong leave areas like Holt in North Norfolk and Boston in Lincolnshire, as well as strong remain areas such as Cambridge City Centre. This report describes what people said to us and examines their hopes and desires going forward. To answer the first question, we came to an agreement as a group that the Brexit campaign was a complete mess. The way they done the campaign, not no one knew really what they were doing. There's so many fours against, fours and against. It's very sad, really, that the, the the soundness of the argument was based on emotion rather than any kind of real analysis, I think, of what the situation is. It's indicative of the fact that it all circled around immigration. What we thought was an intelligent government who could lobby the appropriate points didn't bring anything out in the election that we could intelligently comment on. The actual question that we voted in the referendum was, in many ways, quite a ridiculous question because it was so steered towards the fact that we were going to vote Remain that a leave vote came through and it was, Christ, what do we do now? I'm quite concerned about um, us not controlling our own country. Um, I didn't like the way we were being dictated to by Europe of what we can do and what we can't do. It seemed to favour Brussels more than it favoured us a lot more. I think it was a lot better when we had control of our own our own country and it isn't immigration and there's a whole world out there that, that we can trade with not only Europe some people just coming over they're not really doing or contributing to society if we're already spending so much money abroad like even when they're not in our country we're still giving aid for an aid abroad that could actually be spent on our own country because there's many people that are either like disabled or the NHS or people that desperately need appointments and they can't actually get to the doctors to get them some of them don't work and they just, uh, you know, taking benefit and drinking and just, you know, and the, the country when you take underground and everything. Dad, whose fault is that? It's the government's fault. It's not our fault. It's the government's fault. Because I was absolutely appalled at the way the EU treated the poor people in Greece. I thought it was absolutely wrong that austerity should be in, involved and uh, put on to a small country like that. I'm not sure how bought into this project we were in the first place. We picked those bits that we quite liked about Europe, but we didn't really buy into the overarching concepts. If we leave the European Union, everyone will be the loser. We'll be the losers, and Europe will be the losers too. So it's a lose-lose situation. Yes, I'm old enough to have lived through the Second World War, and as a young soldier, I was sent to Berlin immediately after the war and I saw the complete devastation as a result of what was our form of European civil war and I wouldn't want to see that again. The future of my grandchildren. To be able to travel and work with it. Uh, Trade-wise, it seems to make sense doing, uh, having that uh, link with trade with, with the rest of Europe. I feel most aggrieved that my European citizenship has been removed. I've spent uh, a few years working in Europe, I've been very proud of the fact that I've had a European passport. And free movement to me has been extremely important. As regards to what do we want from a future relationship, basically we're looking for being good mates with our friends in Europe. 
I have nothing against Europeans, absolutely nothing. It is the European Commission and the political business behind it. I mean, what will be our position after Brexit? And I do mean our legal position. What will happen to us? What will happen to the people in, uh, uh, in Europe, to the British people? We, we, we need the government to lay down what and how they're going to do the Brexit mm -hmm. and what the effects will be reciprocating either side of the channel so that everybody knows where they are as opposed to being in doubt and as you said some being slightly worried and in fear. You want to maintain uh, free trade absolutely as a prerequisite which of course we might get and uh, free movement as well but then that's not going to happen because to the people that want to do it out. That's, that's not out. It seems to be a divide between the people who want to have control of borders and people over who want to, uh, people who want to keep free trade agreements and so on. So it's a choice of really which one we want to go for. And perhaps some politicians now, if we come to question three, need to think about what might be politically not necessarily expedient in their own best interest, but in the interest of the country. And at the end of the day, we're the ones that are going to be growing up in a country that's been created for us. So we want a say in what happens. When people sort of, um, sort of criticise the older generation, like, oh, they don't have to live with it, mm, whatever, and stuff like that, I don't sort of agree with that. But I kind of trust them in a sense, because they've lived with it since 1975, when we had the referendum stay in the, what was then the single market. There's some deep concern about the loss of skilled and competent people, especially in the health service. Everybody wants to come to UK. Good old Britain, yeah. Yes. And if they come to Britain and come to be working and make the Britain great Britain, no problem. We're actually in control of our own destiny now. I'm quite optimistic about what the future holds. All these new economies we can negotiate with, uh, I just think it's a really good thing to get out of uh, the, the shackles of uh, Brussels and the, uh, the, the levels of bureaucracy. The Article 50 process is now underway and in accordance with the wishes of the British people, the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union. This is an historic moment from which there can be no turning back. We are going to take control of the things that matter most to us, and we are going to take this opportunity to build a stronger, fairer Britain, a country that our children and grandchildren are proud to call home.